I remember briefly watching a documentary on Netflix called Coded Bias. I wasn't able to finish watching the film, but it struck me as interesting. However, after a conversation with a friend, I was immediately freighted with the gravity of the situation. It seems as though the future is AI. It already interacts with us on a daily basis. So the question becomes, if we as a community do not have some level of control or influence, what does that mean for our future? What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with word from my sponsors. Have you ever wanted to learn an African language? If so, keep watching. There are many ways to connect to different African cultures. Many do it through the enjoyment of the music, the dancing, and my personal favorite, the food. But when it comes to learning the languages, that can be a bit challenging. So, here we are. We here at Speak Afrik are trying to lay the groundwork to build that bridge with our new short phrases and vocabulary series. These are the seed projects to something much larger that we're building. We currently have languages such as Dwi, Kikongo, Mandinka, Igbo, and many more will be added as time goes on. So, if you want to start your journey to connecting to Mama Africa, head over to Speak Afrique at iTunes or Amazon and let's start learning together. Ngiabonga. Salami gashi. To begin, this video is opinion based. Projecting what the future may look like is obviously not an exact science, so I'd advise you guys to take this video with a grain of salt. That being said, although there are tremendous advantages to the development of AI, I'll mostly be highlighting the cautionary voices. Let's begin. I had a great conversation with a friend one day about numerous topics involving our community. He's really into technology and has a prodigious career in cybersecurity. One thing he said really stuck out to me, and I was convinced that what he was saying was probably going to be a reality sometime in the future a reality that our community may have to face. The way he approached it was so simple yet so impactful. It was articulated levels above what I'm about to do now, but I'll try my best to paraphrase. In essence, he said that in the future, AI is going to be used for good and for evil on a grander scale. It's going to be one of the principal currencies of power. Because of this, it's absolutely critical that the black community produces AI that we develop, own, and utilize. His final point is what impacted me the most. He said that AI can and will be used against us in the future, and in some ways, his point is already manifesting. AI is inadvertently used against us today, and I'll give one example later. I have no intention of this being a fear-mongering video. I just want you guys to understand the salience of the topic conveyed through my friend. As I pondered more about what he was saying, it reminded me of one event in African history. The Songhai Empire at the Battle of Tondibi were defeated by the Moroccans in the 16th century. This one battle thrusted Songhai into rapid collapse. One of the reasons for the decline was because the Songhai elite failed to understand scope. They had the opportunity, like their Bornu neighbors in the east, to buttress their military force with firearms, yet they apparently didn't see the need. At the time, firearms were not a decisive factor in battle like it was in the 19th century. However, the gun and the cannon was still a factor at the Battle of Tondibi. These technologies in part caused the complete destruction of the Songhai state in one dramatic setting. The question is, can we consider this to be a legitimate parallel? What will happen to the black community if we don't develop, own, and utilize AI technology, ideally in a centralized manner? I think Ian McDonald of Florida Atlantic University asked some really important questions regarding AI. He gives an example of how in 2016 an AI bot named Tay was introduced into what was then known as Twitter, but removed promptly after users quickly discovered how to make it spew neo-Nazi rhetoric. Tay's failure saliently points not only to questions surrounding artificial intelligence, 
but also to the ways that intelligence, broadly conceived, requires a cultural context in order to be cognitively legible. Was Tay's racism a failure in artificial intelligence or simply an accurate reflection of modern subjectivity, or at least the racial biases in online chat board subcultures? Is racism, sexism, or xenophobia non-intelligent? Why are imaginative constructions of intelligent machines so often premised on the presumption that mechanical reason is independent of sociocultural positioning? Ian MacDonald suggests that AI intelligence tends to tilt more toward the emotive proclivities of the creator. These AI architects are often not from our community. To be charitable, the onus can't completely be on the architects. It's only natural that some bias will be written in the code, if you will. And so, it's important that all human communities are actively involved in creating, monitoring, and correcting artificial intelligence. Perhaps the most pernicious effect of AI technology thus far has been police utilization. Some research has discovered that people with darker skin tone are much more likely to experience errors in facial recognition, an experience that the Netflix documentary highlighted. A semi-tongue-in-cheek observation within our community is that the white community can't tell black people apart. Ironically, this communal observation has been demonstrated in AI technology in very harmful ways. According to an article by the Scientific American, two black men, one in Detroit and another in Georgia, were wrongfully arrested due to facial recognition technology. These can be seen as anecdotal cases, yet one study seems to support the racial inequity of facial recognition software. Our research supports fears that facial recognition technology can worsen racial inequities in policing. We found that law enforcement agencies that use automated facial recognition disproportionately arrest black people. We believe this results from factors that include the lack of black faces in the algorithm's training datasets, a belief that these programs are infallible, and a tendency of officers' own biases to magnify these issues. Some civil rights advocates highlight the issue and claim that this technology isn't adept at distinguishing darker faces, likely leading to more false arrests and profiling. Legal scholar Reva Siegel tells us how the legal system in America preserves itself through transformation. By proxy, one can call some of these systems a white supremacist format that preserves itself by adapting, morphing, and rebounding, a process that ultimately allows rebirth. I think if we're not careful, we can inadvertently allow old discriminatory models to coexist within AI's code, leading to the disastrous effects we've seen in Detroit and Georgia. As my friend noted, I think we need to secure the future by not only creating our own AI, but guide the process of future AI within any and all circles it exists. We can't wait around for AI and its architects to acknowledge our humanity. This may be a critical issue in our community in the future, but I believe we're more than capable of successfully navigating. Well, I'm all out, guys. Do you think that our community needs more control over the future of AI technology? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.